We have a special guest, as I said, the CFO of Home Depot joins us, Richard McPhail. I guess I'll just kick it off with one to Richard. Um, as we kind of gauge the strength of the U.S. consumer and the housing market, you're in a perfect position to give us an outlook on both. Um, how do we look, uh, you know, four days ahead of Black Friday? <laughs> well, Matt uh, and Emily and Nina, thank you for having me. So, look, as, as we've said now for the last uh, year or two, the U.S. consumer remains healthy and strong and engaged in home improvement. We had a, uh, a third quarter uh, that just ended uh, in, in October uh, where we actually saw performance better than expected. Now, we attribute most of that to the fact that weather was exceptional across the country. We also had uh, some impact from hurricanes, obviously. Uh, but, you know, it's a good sign when the sun is out, uh, our customers are engaged and outdoors doing projects. So we think we think the, the customer mindset is healthy. Now, you know, you, you ask about the state of housing. There is some interplay here uh, with home improvement. You know, if you think about the last five years, uh, since 2019, we've seen unprecedented uh, increases in home values and home equity, home values up. Uh, right around 50% since 2019, home equity positions up uh, right around 80%. And so you, you've seen unprecedented wealth creation in housing. Uh, what's interesting about that is typically that drives home improvement demand and home improvement spend as homeowners invest in their homes. What our customers tell us though is, the, is that the interest rate environment is still sticky. You know, we actually saw mortgage rates increase since the September Fed meeting. So that's led to a disincentive for folks to move and do projects that are oriented with moving. And if you think about uh, those larger remodeling projects that are oftentimes financed by debt drawn against home equity positions, our customers tell us while those rates are decreasing slightly, they're still around eight and a quarter to eight and a half percent. And, and so they're saying, look, we're just going to, we're deferring large projects for the moment until we see what happens with rates. So you have a healthy customer with a deferral mindset when it comes to larger projects. Uh, Richard, maybe I can follow up on that. Um, during our interview, we also talked about um, the impact of your business potentially stemming from tariffs as the new administration comes in um, next year. Talk to us a little bit about that, how you navigated that in 2019, and also how you're thinking about that going into next year. Sure. Well, first, it's too early to speculate on what what the administration might might be thinking here. Uh, so we don't want to speculate on particulars. In 2017, we saw tariffs uh, of, of significant uh, uh, degree in certain classes of goods. Uh, there were some appliances classes that that saw tariffs upwards of 25 percent. Look, that's something that we sit down with our supplier base and work through. And uh, so we've we've got a lot of experience in this, and and we are are ready for whatever environment we're going to be operating in. Uh, again, too early to speculate, but you know we feel like if there's anybody who can manage through this, we can. And you know, unique to the Home Depot, perhaps over half of our products are actually uh, manufactured in the United States. Uh, and so, if you think about the kind of the the uh, less than half that that is manufactured or sourced uh, from foreign countries. Uh, we've been diversifying our countries of origin really for the last 15 years. We're in a different position than we were in 2017 with respect to diversification. That's something we're going to continue. So, Richard, I'm wondering what is the strategy to grow the business right now when we're in an environment where home sales are at the lowest level in over a decade? How does Home Depot kind of combat that? Well, you know, Emily, there there's so much improvement we can make in our current model. Um, we have uh, the fifth largest e-commerce business in the United States, even though folks don't normally think about that. But the uniqueness of that business is it it is interconnected with our stores. Virtually all of our customers who shop online shop in our stores as well. But there still there are too many points of friction when you think about customer returns, order modifications. Um, and, and the delivery experience. We're making huge gains in taking friction out of the process for our customer, uh, but we're nowhere near where we want to be. We know if we begin to delight customers more, that 
absolutely translates into higher sales. Another uh, huge opportunity for the Home Depot is with the professional contractor. Roughly half of our sales are, are um, come from that professional contractor who's working on behalf of the homeowner. Uh, we've made significant investments in an ecosystem to really drive into that larger remodel. And so while the market is soft for remodeling, our ability to capture market share uh, really shouldn't uh, depend on what the external environment is. We've invested in a digital experience, in a uh, in rolling out a, a sales force across the nation, and fulfillment assets and capabilities uh, networks of flatbed distribution centers that will be in 17 markets this year uh, where we can get product straight to the job site, not even touching the store, straight to the job site, same day, next day. And the uniqueness of Home Depot is while there are plenty of companies serving the pro like that, we're the only one who can serve them across all product categories. So we can simplify the pros' lives and they turn to us because they know that, that uh, they can rely on us. And, and I should say, actually, you know, one thing that I think is unique to the Home Depot, you know, we're, we're building stores again. Um, we, we really stopped in any material sense building stores in 2008. Um, in 2023, we announced an 80 store build that will uh, roll out over five years. By the end of this year, we will have built 25 of those new stores. And we're so excited about what, what we're already seeing. It's one of the best investments we can actually make at Home Depot. All right, Richard, great to have a little bit of time with you, and I hope we can get you back uh, either here on Bloomberg Business Week or you join me on my show uh, every day, 9 to 11, on Bloomberg Open Interest. David McPhail there, the CFO of Home Depot.